When I say mummies, which country comes to mind? Egypt, right? But guess what? The world's oldest mummies have been found in Southeast Asia from burial sites in China. Some secrets are buried for a reason. In the vast, unforgiving desert of China's Tarim Basin, hundreds of mummies lay hidden for 4,000 years. When they were discovered, their Western features sent shockwaves through archaeology. When you are working with DNA, you really need to show your respect for the people behind it. The story seemed clear. They were Caucasians, migrants from Europe or Siberia. Many people are crazy about this theory. But after a definitive DNA analysis, scientists have finally solved the puzzle of their origins. The answer is not just unexpected, it reveals a ghost population that existed in complete isolation, a finding that is forcing us to rethink everything we thought we knew. The shocking truth in their bones. For what felt like an eternity, the story of the Tarim Basin mummies was a simple one, or so it seemed. In the 1990s, archaeologists exploring the vast, windswept deserts of the Xinjiang region in northwest China began unearthing hundreds of astonishingly well-preserved human remains. These weren't your typical ancient finds. These mummies, dating back as far as 4,000 years, looked European. They were tall, some over six feet, with long noses, deep-set eyes, and hair that was shockingly blonde, red, or light brown. They were buried in elaborate clothing, including colorful textiles that looked remarkably similar to ancient Celtic tartan. The conclusion for most of the scientific community was obvious. These had to be migrants. They were believed to be the descendants of farmers from the Black Sea region of southern Russia, a group known as the Yamnaya, who swept across Asia thousands of years ago, bringing with them Indo-European languages and new technology. This theory made perfect sense. It explained the faces, the clothes, and their presence so far from Europe. For decades, this was the official story. But what many overlooked is that science has a way of uncovering truths that are far stranger than fiction. In 2021, a team of international scientists published a groundbreaking study that completely shattered the old narrative. They didn't just look at the mummies, they went straight to the source code of life itself, their DNA. The team successfully sequenced the genomes of 13 of the earliest Tarim Basin mummies dating from around 2100 to 1700 BC. Everyone expected the results to confirm the migration theory, to finally pinpoint exactly where in the West these people came from. Instead, the results delivered a scientific bombshell. The DNA showed absolutely no connection to the Yamnaya. There wasn't a trace of the Western farmers who were supposed to be their ancestors. In fact, they hadn't mixed with any other populations at all. They were a ghost population of people who were genetically isolated for thousands of years. You see, the analysis revealed that the Tarim Basin people weren't outsiders at all. They were direct descendants of a much older, largely vanished Ice Age population known as the Ancient North Eurasians, or A-N-E. This was a group of hunter-gatherers who roamed across Siberia and parts of Central Asia over 10,000 years ago. The ANE are a fascinating group because their genetics contributed to the ancestry of many later peoples, including Native Americans and modern Europeans. But here's the wow factor. The Tarim Basin people were almost pure ANE. They were a remnant, a direct window into the Ice Age, who had somehow survived in total isolation in one of the most inhospitable places on Earth. They weren't a branch of any other group. They were the tree itself. This discovery was, to put it mildly, stunning. It meant that this unique, European-looking population was actually indigenous to the region. They hadn't come from anywhere else. They had always been there. This group didn't migrate into the area. They were a local population that had adopted ideas from the outside world, like farming and herding, without interbreeding with the people who brought them. The mystery of the Tarim Basin mummies had just gotten a whole lot deeper. But if they were a lost local tribe, how did they develop such a unique culture in total isolation? 4,000 years of solitude. To understand how bizarre this genetic finding truly is, you have to understand where these mummies were found. The Tarim Basin is located within the Taklamakan Desert, a place whose name is often translated as, you go in, but you don't come out. It's one of the largest and driest sandy deserts in the world, a brutal landscape of shifting dunes and extreme temperatures. It is, without a doubt, one of the last places on Earth you'd expect to find a thriving Bronze Age civilization. 
Yet that is exactly what archaeologists found. The preservation of the mummies is almost miraculous, and it has nothing to do with fancy embalming techniques like those used in ancient Egypt. It's all thanks to the environment. The dry, salty soil and the freezing winter air essentially freeze-dried the bodies, preserving their skin, hair, and even their eyelashes for thousands of years. It's a natural mummification process that has left us with an unparalleled glimpse into the past. One of the most famous sites is the Shaohe Tomb Complex, also known as the Little River Cemetery. Here the dead were buried in a way that is utterly unique. They were placed inside large, boat-like coffins, which were then overturned and buried in the sand. The cemetery itself looks like a forest of wooden posts with tall phallic and vulva-shaped markers rising from the dunes, symbols of fertility and rebirth. Inside these boat coffins, the dead were dressed for a journey into the afterlife. They wore felt hats, intricately woven woolen capes, and soft leather boots. They were buried with personal items and provisions, giving us clues about their lives and beliefs. One of the most common finds is cheese. Yes, cheese. Scientists analyzed the yellowish clumps found on the chests and necks of the mummies and discovered it was a 4,000-year-old kefir cheese, one of the oldest cheeses ever discovered. This tells us they were herders, likely raising sheep and goats for milk. They were also farmers. Grains of wheat, millet, and barley have been found in the tombs, suggesting they cultivated crops along the small rivers that flowed into the desert from the surrounding mountains. What's truly wild is that all of these things, wheat, barley, sheep, goats, and even the bronze technology they used, originated far to the west in places like the Fertile Crescent and Siberia. For a long time, this was seen as proof of the migration theory. Of course, they brought these things with them. But now the DNA tells a different story. The thing nobody tells you is that these people were culinary and technological sponges. They saw new ideas and technologies coming from the outside world and adopted them, but they kept their bloodlines completely separate. They were a community living on an island of sand, taking what they needed from the outside world without ever truly joining it. This level of cultural exchange without genetic exchange is incredibly rare in the ancient world. But if their DNA was so unique, why were the old theories about Western migrants so believable for so long? The Tocharian theory crumbles. The idea that the Tarim Basin mummies were migrants from the West wasn't just some wild guess. For nearly a century, it was the most logical and well-supported theory out there, and it's easy to see why. The evidence, at least on the surface, was incredibly compelling. First and foremost, you just had to look at them. The beauty of Lulin, one of the most famous mummies, was a woman who was around 5 feet 10 inches tall with high cheekbones, a sharp nose, and light brown hair. She looked like she could have walked out of a village in Ireland. Many people are crazy about her lifelike appearance. Other mummies, like the 6 foot 6 Cherchen man, had reddish brown hair and wore vibrant woolen clothing. This physical evidence was the primary driver of the Western origin theory. In a region dominated by East Asian populations for most of its history, these people stood out dramatically. Then there was the textile evidence. The fabrics they were buried in were not just simple cloths. They were complex woven wools, often in diagonal twill patterns. The most startling discovery was fragments of a textile that was, for all intents and purposes, tartan. This specific weaving style was thought to be a hallmark of Celtic cultures in Europe. Finding it in a 4,000-year-old tomb in the middle of a Chinese desert was a massive shock. It seemed like a smoking gun, a direct link to the ancient peoples of the West. Archaeologists and historians put two and two together. The people looked European and their clothes looked European, so they must have come from Europe. This led to the famous Tocharian theory. The Tocharians were a mysterious Indo-European speaking people who lived in the Tarim Basin much later around the first millennium AD. Ancient texts described them as having red hair and green eyes. For a long time, scholars believed the Tarim Basin mummies were the ancestors of the Tocharians, the original Indo-European migrants who brought their language and culture to the region. It was a neat, tidy story that connected all the dots. The problem is, as we now know from the DNA, it was completely wrong. The genetic evidence shows no link whatsoever between the Tarim mummies and the Yamnaya people who were supposed to be the source of all Indo-European migrations. 
The DNA of the mummies belongs to a much older, more ancient lineage that was already in Asia. The tartan-like weave? It turns out that this weaving technique likely developed independently in different parts of the world. It wasn't an exclusively European invention. The entire narrative, built on observation, was an illusion. So if the old story is a myth, what does the new truth tell us about our ancient past? Answering the Tarim Enigma So here we are. The dust has settled and the DNA results have spoken. The Tarim Basin mummies weren't lost European adventurers or wandering Bronze Age farmers. They were locals. The last remnants of a truly ancient Ice Age population that somehow survived deep into recorded history. But the final verdict doesn't close the case. If anything, it blows it wide open. Because if they really were isolated descendants of Ice Age peoples, how did they hold out for so long in one of the harshest environments on Earth? Their home, the Tarim Basin, was both a cradle and a cage. This enormous desert basin in what's now Western China is surrounded by some of the most formidable barriers on the planet. The Tian Shan Mountains to the north, the Pamirs to the west, and the Himalayas to the south. To the east lies the endless Gobi Desert. Imagine a vast bowl sealed off by mountains and sand. A place where time could stand still. These natural walls created one of the most isolated pockets of human life the world has ever seen. And yet they weren't totally alone. Despite their genetic isolation, the Tarim people clearly had contact with others. Archaeologists have found evidence that they grew wheat, a crop originally domesticated in the Middle East, and millet, which came from East Asia. Somehow ideas, and maybe a few traders, crossed the mountains and deserts to reach them. That's the fascinating part. Culture can travel even when people don't. You don't need an army of migrants to spread new technology. All it takes is a few curious minds meeting at the edge of the known world. The Tarim people were master adapters. They took what worked, crops, herding techniques, even textile patterns, and made them their own, all while keeping their unique genes intact. It's a model of cultural exchange without population replacement something that challenges the old idea that innovation only comes from conquest. Their world was connected, but on their terms. But then something changed. Around 1500 BC, their unique culture begins to fade from the archaeological record. Their settlements go quiet. Their distinct genetic signature, so unlike any other, vanishes from the region. What happened? The simplest explanation is absorption. As new waves of peoples moved into Central Asia, groups like the Afanasievo, the Andronovo, and later the Xiongnu, the once isolated Tarim people were slowly surrounded. Their population, likely small to begin with, may have gradually blended with these newcomers. Their bloodline didn't end with a catastrophe. It dissolved generation by generation into the great human melting pot of Eurasia. But not everyone's convinced it was that simple. Some researchers think there's more to the story. Could climate change have played a role? The Tarim Basin has always been a fragile place to live, dependent on rivers that shift or dry up without warning. A prolonged drought could have forced them to abandon their oases, pushing them into contact and eventual merger with outsiders. Others go further, suggesting that disease, famine, or even conflict with migrating steppe tribes might have wiped out whole communities. And then there are the wilder theories. Some fringe researchers argue that the Tarim mummies represent a completely forgotten branch of humanity, a surviving pocket of an Ice Age culture that vanished elsewhere. They point to their unusual physical traits, their sophisticated textiles, and the sheer mystery of their origins as evidence that we're looking at something more than just early Central Asians. Others speculate that their isolation might have preserved knowledge or customs from an era long before recorded history, a kind of living time capsule from the Pleistocene. The Tarim mummies prove that our ancient world was far more complex than we ever knew. Does this discovery mean that our modern ideas about race and ancestry are completely meaningless? Let us know what you think below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more incredible stories from the past.